Are you using pothos? Or are you planning on using pothos to reduce uh, nitrogen and other waste products from your aquarium fish? Uh, join me, and uh, I'll go back through 10 years of my experience uh, with pothos and uh, spend some time on uh, my current setup, which is a 500-gallon uh, aquarium where I've been able to keep a uh, heavily stocked aquarium, I might add, where I've been able to keep the uh, nitrates uh, in the range of 0 to 20 parts per million. My first video about my journey with poth pothos was about seven years ago where I reported on the two or three year results with my uh, uh, pothos growing out of my sump. It was a uh, 340 gallon acrylic aquarium with a 65 gallon acrylic sump and the uh, pothos grew over the top of the sump and as you can see here it, it grew behind the aquarium in a space that I left open uh, with lights above it between uh, the aquarium and uh, my desk. About eight years ago I bought a uh, 500 gallon acrylic Bowfront Aquarium, which uh, has a 110 gallon sump, and I also added a uh, what I call an aquaponic grow bed, where I had water from the aquarium circulating through the the bed, so that the plants could re uh, remove uh, nitrogen and other other waste products from the fish. Now, the uh, shot that you're seeing here is from a video I made uh, about uh, three years ago where, where uh, the plants were essentially getting out of hand. I thought if it got any worse, I'd have to go in there and uh, remove them uh, with a machete. You'll also notice that the plants have the benefit of natural uh, sunlight from a south-facing uh, window. Fast forward today, and we're going to be talking about that uh, that same aquarium, the 500 gallon, which, with the sump and the uh, aquaponic grow bed, uh, is uh, approaching 700 gallons. Anyway, as you can see, the the uh, I've gone from African cichlids to some uh, very large uh, Central American cichlids and also some very large, uh, uh, they're uh, garamis, uh, red-tailed giant garamis, which I just love. There's still a few Africans in here uh, that were kind of uh, leftovers from my uh, earlier journeys in African cichlids. But I think the important point here is this was a very heavily stocked tank when these fish... Uh, take a poop or defecate, whatever you want to call it, uh, there's a large cloud of uh, fecal matter that enters the water. Uh, some of these fish are uh, going on uh, 14 inches. So, uh, you know, again, uh, although it's a very large system approaching 700 gallons, it uh, takes in, I feed the fish a lot of food and uh, they produce a lot of waste. What I've had to do in the last three years is essentially uh, clear out the uh, aquaponic grow bed a couple, three times because the plants got out of uh, control. And what I'm trying to do is uh, expand the uh, pothos in particular to where it's growing over the aquarium. So now the uh, system gets light from the windows. There's also some lights uh, above uh, the window area. And you can see when I l lift up the shroud over the top of the aquarium, 
that we have uh, LED lights growing all the way across, and the uh, pothos are are uh, thriving in this type of uh, setup. Originally, I added a lot of different species of plants uh, to the grow bed because I was in as interested in the aesthetics of the planet arrangement as I was in reducing nitrates. But over time, I've discovered that uh, the pothos uh, do better than the other plants, although I still have a number of uh, other plants like peace lilies and uh, philodendrons growing in the main uh, area of the bed. Now I'm going to revisit the conclusions that I reached seven years ago uh, regarding uh, pothos on my original uh, video, and I'm also going to update uh, what I've learned uh, based on the additional seven years of experience with growing pothos and uh, the extensive experience I believe I now have uh, putting it on a larger system, a 700-gallon uh, system, the 500-gallon uh, acrylic aquarium, and uh, what, what uh, I've observed. The first update is, uh, as before, pothos will not limit water changes in uh, the system. Uh, as I've learned in uh, the years since, there are a lot of other contaminants uh, from our fish's mo metabolism that uh, need to be removed in, in addition to uh, nitrites and uh, nitrates. So uh, I'm still doing on this particular aquarium uh, about 80% water change every two to three weeks and my uh, nitrates, in spite of the huge uh, bio load from all these large fish still generally ranges between uh, zero, the nitrates range between zero and 20, 20 parts per million. Seven years ago, on the uh, 340 gallon aquarium with 65 gallon sump, uh, I was doing 50% water changes and my uh, uh, nitrates were fluctuating between 20 and 40 parts per million. And again, as in the last slide, with my 500-gallon acrylic 700-gallon system with the uh, sump and the aquaponic grow bed, I'm running at uh, between 0 and uh, 20 parts per million nitrates, with uh, the 20 being hit uh, just before uh, a 80% uh, water change, which I'm doing every two to three weeks. Seven years ago, when I produced the first uh, video on pothos, it would it, it appeared as if when nitrates were below 20 parts per million, uh, the the pothos growth started to slow. Made a lot of sense at the time. However. As I mentioned, I'm running at zero to 20 parts per million nitrate in my 500 gallon now, yet the pothos growth seems to be exploding at all times. And I explain this is because the reason I, my reasoning is that this is happening is because the, uh, the large fish are continuously uh, producing Ammonia, however, that ammonia is uh, quickly absorbed by, neutralized, incorporated into plant growth before it becomes uh, nitrates. Hence, uh, the uh, the uh, nitrates never get ab above 20 parts per million, no matter how often uh, or when during the day I check the uh, the uh, the uh, uh, nitrates. The next conclusion from seven years ago uh, has been uh, I've disproved. Uh, at the time, my uh, seven years ago, Pothos was growing the best under uh, Grolux type bulbs. Uh, made a lot of sense, but since then, of course, we all know that we have uh, 
the availability of LED lights. So today on my 500 gallon, I am using uh, LA, multi-spectrum LEDs, and also as as you saw, a south-facing window. So I would uh, update the statement to Pothos grows with uh, great with LED lights and best with uh, natural sunlight. Last but not least, uh, my last conclusion from seven years ago was that pothos can help with nitrate, nitrate removal in heavy, heavily stocked aquariums. Uh, this is true, but uh, I, I'd like to add a few notes to that. Uh, you know, I've seen people who have a piece of uh, pothos hanging out of a hang on back filter with very little light. So the, the first uh, qualifier I would add is that the pothos needs to be actively growing with uh, an energy source from close by lights or, in the best case, uh, uh, a window where it gets some uh, significant uh, natural light. The second thing, as uh, you witnessed in looking at my 500-gallon aquarium, is there there needs to be an awful lot of uh, plant biomass to uh, significantly reduce the nitrates, especially in a heavily heavily stocked uh, uh, aquarium like I have with my uh, my 500. So I think uh, all this proves to me Pothos is is a great addition to your aquarium. It can be uh, beautiful in your setup can be interesting, and uh, if you give it the right conditions, lighting, etc., uh, it can, and you have the right quantity, you can certainly make, as I have, a significant improvement in the uh, water quality. Thanks for watching. Look forward to your comments. Thank you.